the headlines. The Sun newspaper publishes new claims about the BBC presenter at the centre of the crisis, saying he broke lockdown rules to meet a younger person. It comes as BBC News reveals the male presenter sent abusive and menacing messages to a second individual. Meanwhile, the corporation says two attempts were made over several weeks to contact the family at the centre of the initial complaint. I think one thing I would say is these are damage. These are clearly damaging to the BBC. It's not a good situation. A warm greeting for President Zelensky at the NATO summit, but leaders refused to set a timetable for Ukraine to join. At least nine protesters and one police officer are injured in Israel in clashes over planned judicial reforms. And nearly a decade after taking power in a military coup, Thailand's Prime Minister says he's retiring from politics. Prayus Chanucha will remain as Prime Minister until a new government is formed. Two months ago, his military-backed party won less than a tenth of the seats in Thailand's parliament. His decision to retire comes two days before a key vote in Thailand's parliament that could see the next prime minister elected. The European Court of Human Rights has ruled in favour of the double 800-metre Olympic champion Kasta Semenya in a case involving testosterone levels in female athletes. The 32-year-old South African was born with differences of sexual development and is not allowed to compete in events between 400 meter and a mile without taking testosterone-reducing drugs. Now, politicians in Washington have been questioning representatives from the PGA Tour over their proposed deal with Live Golf. And in the course of their inquiries, U.S. senators have discovered a non-disparagement clause in the agreement that was signed that prevents golf chiefs from criticizing Saudi Arabia. The clause is not uncommon, but it would appear it was inserted into the contract on the eve of it being agreed a move that deeply concerns the Democratic senator, Richard Blumenthal. Scientists are now closer to officially declaring a new geological time period, which marks the start of humanity's irreversible impact on the planet. Experts say the formal start date of the Anthropocene era is the 1950s, which coincides with the appearance of man-made plutonium on Earth. They've nominated Crawford Lake in Canada as the official global monitoring site for Anthropocene. Two people have died in a crash at the Southern 100 road races on the Isle of Man. Organisers said the incident involved two riders, a marshal and a spectator, at the circuit on the south of the island. Leslie Van Houten, a former follower of the American cult leader Charles Manson, has been released on parole after serving more than five decades of a life sentence for her role in two brutal murders. She was 19 when she broke into a home in Los Angeles and stabbed two people to death alongside other Manson followers in 1969. A dispute about the estate of the soul singer Aretha Franklin has been resolved. A jury in the US state of Michigan has found that a handwritten note from 2014, which was found wedged down the side of a sofa, is her valid will. It overrides a document from four years earlier. Both wills see her four sons sharing revenue from her music and copyrights.